This episode is sponsored by Relogic Research. Relogic is an engineering, aerospace, and technology company dedicated to solving our nation's toughest defense problems while investing in the bright minds of Huntsville. Relogic is excited to be a part of the innovation and continued growth of the Huntsville community. Visit their website today to see what they are excited about at relogicresearch.com, and all of this information will be in the episode notes. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited Thank you're you. here. We tried to do this a couple of weeks ago. We had a little bit of a power outage. Yeah. Um, but would you like to introduce yourself and we'll sure. get started there? Yeah. I'm Chandler Wicks, um, husband, father, engineer. Awesome. Uh, Huntsville native. Yeah. So I, I know, um, like I said, you're a Huntsville native. You grew up here. Talk a little bit about uh, growing up here in Huntsville and kind of what you would ultimately decide to pursue a career in. I think it would bring you to Lipscomb and then back here to UAH to finish it off. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up here was awesome. I, I'm, um, yeah, grew up in South Huntsville, uh, went to Chaffee, uh, <laughs> had a had a blast. Uh, yeah, just really enjoyed growing up in Huntsville. It's a um, much smaller feeling than it does oh, oh, for now. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I think that, I mean, I think it's good. It's uh, The growth's exciting and all that yeah. stuff, but it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, grew up here, played uh, some sports at YMCA and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, ultimately uh, graduated from Madison Academy, which was fantastic. And, um, and you played baseball? money at Lipscomb and then was able to walk on uh, okay. to the baseball team there. So I consider myself very fortunate uh, <laughs> to do that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so did you end up um, go ahead, like jumping right into pursuing a career in engineering? And was that something you always thought you would do? Did you have family that did it? Like talk a little bit about yeah. sort of that, um, your educational sort of uh, pursuits going into college. Yeah. I, I think I knew I wanted to do something technical. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I didn't know this at the time about myself, but I'm, I'm, generally attracted to things that I don't know that much about to okay. try to try to try <laughs> yeah, to learn for sure yeah. yeah um and so yeah engineering is obviously one of those things as a high school student it's like yeah. wow there's a lot to learn there so for sure and then and, uh, and you're in a city that you know there's it's full of engineers right and, and I mean it, it was you know it's grown into much more of a small business town I would say over the last couple of years but I mean growing up for you I mean engineering was uh the forefront of Huntsville and it still right. is right absolutely and, and my family um you know I definitely I had a lot of good role models growing up. Um, my dad's an engineer. My grandpa's an engineer. My uncle, uh, my dad's brother was in, uh, you know, research and technical things. Okay. So it was like, it was like, it's it, all been through your blood. So like it, it, you were bound to do engineering of some kind or some sort of technical field. It would have been tough to do anything <laughs> uh, outside of that, but, uh, but that's what I wanted to do also. So yeah. it's, it's what we talked about a lot. You know, a lot of the life lessons and for sure things like that were centered around that. And so I knew I wanted to do something like that. Um, I was, I've always been interested in cars and, uh, mechanical things so mm -hmm. that made you know pretty good sense um to do that so yeah I, I, right out of the gate at Lipscomb I pursued uh that um at the time uh Lipscomb wasn't an accredited engineering school okay um we would have been the first class to graduate with an accreditation gotcha um in mechanical engineering and so because it was, it was a pretty I mean, it's a pretty small school isn't it or it's relatively small, relatively small. Um, okay well actually lots of folks from Huntsville um really support the Lipscomb engineering, uh, program. Okay. Um, and so it, it was an awesome program. We had fantastic professors. There was just a small amount of risk that <laughs> by the time I graduated, yeah, you just don't know. I, I just didn't know. And, yeah. it, and it, I will say it worked out exactly like they said it would, you know, all my friends that graduated or they ended up with an accreditation. It, perfect. it all worked out perfect, yeah. but, um, a little bit of a risk for me. And so, um, I decided to, uh, move back to Huntsville ultimately because I got an internship, uh, over the summer, okay. um, working with kinetic. Okay. So uh, did you do two years at Lipscomb and then your mm -hmm. last two years here at UAH? Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. And actually last three years, at last UAH. three years. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So five year plan for me. Perfect. Hey, uh, but I was working the last, um, you know, part time the last two years. Okay. So yeah. after that internship, so it all worked out really great. Um, and then, uh, and you were able to play baseball here at UAH too, a little bit as I well, did a little bit. Yep. I came back and played for a little while longer. And then, uh, you know, I always kind of knew that. I figured college was kind of <laughs> the extent of my uh, talent. But, uh, yeah, and, and it worked out great. So I was able yeah. to, you know, start working early and learn about the industry and, um, you know, meet folks. and For sure. I mean, that. and so those in internships give you the, that, that first experience. Like, obviously, you can learn it all in the textbooks. Mm -hmm. You can be in the classroom. You can do hands-on things at school. But not until you get that at first taste of what it's like to be in the real world until that's really the moment where you know, is this something I actually do want to pursue or do I want to pursue it a different direction or right. whatever it might be? I mean, that, that was the case for me. I had an internship 
with computer science, thought that was going to be the uh, the thing you do here in Huntsville, yeah. uh, and realized very quickly computer science wasn't for me. And so I'll talk on a microphone with people, and that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, it's a great at first experience. So we with that internship the last couple of years at UAH, you were able to get a full-time job once you graduated with that company, correct? I was. Yeah, I was very fortunate um, to be able to do that. And I'll say baseball uh, is what brought that connection to okay. me. Is what, and so that worked out great. Um, Kinetic was awesome. Um, I had a great leadership and management. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, uh, also software. Um, okay. so I, and I do not have a software <laughs> I, that, that was, uh, that was a not your strong suit, no. <laughs> um, but I'm glad they allowed me to stay as long for as sure. I did. So, so how long did you end up staying? Uh, once you got the full-time job, were you there for a couple of years? It was a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. It, and it was great. We, um, we're doing some really cool stuff. It was, um, um, basically creating digital flight manuals for pilots to make changes on the fly, like during a mission. So okay. if you, um, you know, all that stuff is planned out ahead of time. And I am not a pilot, but all the <laughs> stuff is planned out ahead of time, especially, you know, in, when you're talking about mission planning, it's yeah. how much fuel are we taking? What are we, what are we dropping off, picking up? What's the weather? You know, all that stuff uh, goes into the, the calculation of, you know, can we do this or not? Or and so y- y'all were building like the software that allowed the pilot to like on this, on the, on the mm-hmm. spot, be able to change things and change, right. var- and change variables, I'm guessing. That's right. So okay. yeah, if you, you know, emergency call comes in, hey, we got to go pick up this piece of equipment or these these guys, you know, I didn't leave with that in the plan, so <laughs> do I have enough fuel to yeah. make that happen and things like that. And so um, a big part of that was digitizing the data that already existed. Okay. And then uh, the smarter people were working that into a <laughs> software solution. I was on the data side and Perfect. some of the testings. And so after your time there, where did you end up kind of pursuing a career? Because I know obviously the mechanical element of the work you do is really the more of the, mm-hmm. is, is more where your passion is than the software. So were you able to get more of, uh, your, was your next job kind of more in that realm of work or did you kind of still have that software stuff that you were doing after you left that job? Yeah, I, I did kind of feel like something was missing a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm I, mechanically minded uh i love cars and racing and things that go fast and stuff yeah. like that so i was like man if i could do some of that in my day job that'd be cool, right? <laughs> yeah uh, best so, of both worlds yeah exactly so i uh started looking around a little bit um just no for no particular reason just looking for kind of the next thing maybe try to go you know broaden my engineering skills yeah um and so I went to work uh for a company called ses okay. so here in town great company um they do a lot of helicopter retrofits and upgrades and things like that um uh, enormous facility. It's really, really cool place wow. to work. Uh, and so grade or something that another country built that, you know, we definitely don't have the data on. Yeah. Uh, so I was part of a team working on that there. Okay. Um, and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. So it was very, very mechanical. Mm-hmm. You know, my desk was right next <laughs> to the piece of equipment that yeah. we were working but like, on. And, so. and, and, and that was that step that you wanted to do in your career. Like you all, like you kind of knew that in college, that like that's where you were leaning towards. And then that first job was obviously more computer stuff, mm-hmm. more software related. And this is the first job back into that hands-on, more mechanically driven day to day operations. That's right. Yep, exactly. And it was, um, yeah, working on in kind of a, a shop floor environment, okay. um, hand tools and, uh, <laughs> They were fortunate enough to let our group of engineers uh, use the tools, which there you is go. Uh, uh, not everywhere, uh, <laughs> which is a good thing. So yes, I, I include sure. myself in that. Uh, but yeah, we um, worked on a lot of different things there. And it, yeah. was, it was really neat to see how different things are manufactured and just all the different ways you can go about things. And then, you know, learning about the documentation, you know, as a true engineering yeah. product, they're documentation is just as important as the hardware. Yeah. And I would assume those two different jobs, those first two jobs out of college were very, very different Mm -hmm. in your day-to-day work life. I mean, the stuff you would do in your first job was that you're going into the office looked very different for those two jobs. It did. Absolutely. Yeah. um, Yeah, it definitely did. And I, I felt my, I kind of found myself more comfortable with the mechanical uh, parts of my of the second job at SES. Um, but yeah, and it's funny you mentioned the going into the office part. So at SES is great. Again, great company, uh, have an enormous facility here in Huntsville and where we parked versus where my desk was, we calculated that each day, if, especially if you took a lunch, it was a mile of walking wow. between uh, just a huge campus, just enormous. Yeah. Wow. And it's a, uh, it's very, very cool place. Um, and so, so you, and, and, and you were there for a little while too. And then I guess, so I'm, I'm trying to think of the discography a little bit, but you were there and then you ended up going to I3 for a little bit. I did. And then from I3 was then where uh, Relogic star started. That's right. So talk a little bit about sort of, you know, mm-hmm. 
came about. Talk a little bit about what that those conversations looked like and kind yeah. of what spawned uh, the formation of Relogic. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it actually, you know, kind of started at SES. So a lot of what we were doing was reverse engineering. Um, you know, at the time, uh, it was it was efficient and effective for us to you know draw things by hand and then go model it in CAD and then come back and uh, maybe you build a prototype or something like that. And that's how we did that. Mm-hmm. And so through that, I gained an interest in, you know, uh, in reverse engineering. And so, uh, going from there, you know, I kind of thought, man, there's gotta be, you know, some technology or something that we could bring into this. Yeah. Uh, 3d scanning was kind of a new industry, mm-hmm. uh, at least on the industrial scale, okay. uh, to where it's accurate enough to really provide good engineering data. Um, and so this was, 15, 16 ish. Okay. And so like the really nice systems were expensive. Um, <laughs> and so I, I kind of had got a feel for that. I thought, man, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I ultimately went to I three. Uh, there's a chance to work on, um, it's actually a medical, a medical product okay. there, uh, or medical system, um, to produce, uh, some of the, um, the dye that like when you, if you get a, an MRI or CT scan or something. Okay. The radioactive dye. Oh, wow. Uh, that, and that gets injected. you were working on this at I3? At I3. Wow. That was what kind of attracted me there. I thought, man, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a new it's, thing. It's, it's, it's completely in left field. Yes. Com- versus the other work you were doing more government-related mm-hmm. stuff. You're doing more of a consumer-based product right. uh, hands-on at I3. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it would have been, you know, potentially offered to, to the commercial yeah. realm or the wow. medical realm. That's pretty cool. And so, yeah, irradiated... Uh, it was a lot of physics and chemistry that I that was not there to do that, <laughs> that I don't uh, yeah. still don't understand. Not not your well, role, right? Yeah, not my role. <laughs> but I was working on the mechanical part of the system. Okay. Um, it was really 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 neat. Um, you know, basically being able to generate that irradiated dye on on demand versus mm-hmm. the way they do it. You now. Said this is like 2015, so, 2016. That's right. Okay. Yep. So I started working there, um, working on a few other projects, and uh, through that I actually met. Um, who would be our first customer at Relogic um, at Avmec at the at okay, the, at, um, on the Arsenal, and so he um, had you know a, a lab, and they were doing a lot of reverse engineering and three D scanning and stuff like that. And that, and so and, and that was the stuff that you like. You really enjoyed doing that. That was the hands on stuff that you were doing prior to going to I three. And so you kind of like obviously you're not doing that at I three, but you meet somebody that kind of needs that service mm-hmm. or is doing that currently. Right. He was doing doing that. Uh, had a small group uh, mostly just him and he said man i'd really like some help I said, yeah. hey, i'm i'm really passionate about this this is super cool you <laughs> yeah. know uh and so we just developed a relationship and eventually said man i could come do this full time for you for and sure that was kind of the the genesis of uh of relogic and i'll tell you the timing uh, of that worked out great i3's fantastic company just growing and growing and growing yeah um still are and at the time there was some concern about uh kind of growing uh up vertically instead of instead horizontal, of, yeah. instead of horizontal, for sure. Say maybe we spread out a little bit, and so there was a little bit of an appetite to spin off some uh, companies, okay. uh, you know, small business or uh, service stable, better known small business, things like that. And so, um, so I was part of that. And perfect. So that was something I'd wanted to do, kind of. And it was like just the, the perfect customer. timing. The timing was great. Yeah, and so I mean, you know, starting a new venture is always tough, and especially when you're in a government contracting company, you're kind of contract to contract. Mm-hmm. What did that first couple of years look like for Relogic, and was it? Did you already have some contracts lined up that allowed the growth to happen pretty quickly, or and then obviously then a couple of years later you would have COVID. So like, mm-hmm. what what did that initial launch look like? What did it look like to get co- like get employees to help you because you can't do everything yourself? Mm-hmm. And then what did COVID look like, and kind of what did that impact have? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, so the initial. Um, you know, contracting outlook for Relogic was was pretty tough. Um, again, I was fortunate enough to have support from I3 yeah. to really help launch that. Uh, for sure. If that, it, it would have been much uh, tougher yeah. and, and more uncertainty if that hadn't have been mm-hmm. the case. So, um, so that I was consider myself fortunate to, to be in that position. But, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, yeah, hey, we got some big projects. And then, you know, me, my full-time sport turned into, <laughs> hey, we need three more people. Yeah. So, um, and then and the, being able to pay those people and being able to support those people. And then, right. oh, then I think like, that's what's the most, I think what's the scariest part of me for being a government contracting company is that, you know, so you often have to make that decision if you should jump in on this contract. Because mm-hmm. if you jump in on this contract, it could really blow up the company. But if you also don't get this contract, you could potentially lose the company. Yep. And so you're really kind of fighting like a, a, a tooth and nail to kind of figure out, you know, do I go after this? Do I not? Do I grow steadily? Do I not? Um, and so you started adding on a team pretty quickly, I guess, as, as you started mm-hmm. in 2018. 
Um, what did that COVID impact happen? And like, how did that affect the company? And what was the company size around that point? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. And, but having those relationships with your customers, understanding their mission yeah. and really just bringing value to them, mm-hmm. right? Regardless For of sure. whatever it is, if it's in your, um, in your capabilities. And so we were fortunate enough to be in that position, hired three people, uh, September of 2018 is really when I consider the, the start, the start okay. of, you know, of Relogic. And so, yep, it was four or five of us, you know, through the end of that <laughs> year. Um, what was it like having only five people in a company coming from companies that were much bigger in yeah. size prior? What was it, what was that dynamic like? Did you enjoy that dynamic? Were you uh, comfortable or did you always kind of see like, I really want to see this become, you know, 15, 20? Yeah. Or, or did you really enjoy that? Hey, you could get you could get in a room like we're in today mm-hmm. and you, the whole company could be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I enjoy, I've enjoyed every stage um, so far. But yeah, that that's an interesting one. And I'll tell you the, the thing that was kind of the most eye opening to me was you know, having to make some operational decisions or executive sure. decisions. And whereas, you know, working somewhere else, you would get an email that says, here's how we're going to do this, <laughs> whatever. And then yeah, you like, could almost get your whole team in there and kind of yeah. like get feedback. That's right. And wow. it was kind of a, and then the eye opening part to me was just like, I've got to write that email you know, <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Or have them. They're looking at me for this now. Like right. instead of you waiting for the email, you're the one that has to craft this email. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of being that CEO, being that, you know, the, the leader of the team. Uh, so you go from five, you start adding a few people. Mm-hmm. Um, so that first year you had about five people or so in at Relogic. Uh, 2019 hits. Um, what was the growth like in that as it leads up to, I guess, 2020, 2021 when COVID started? Yeah, um, we, it was it was great. Uh, I think we doubled that year. Um, so maybe it was 12, 12 okay. to 13 folks. Um, and, it, and it was great. I, we we were had reached to other parts of the country, mm-hmm. uh, the depot level, Places like Corpus Christi, oh, wow. uh, Texas, and so Hunter Kenny. Was that like that was twenty nineteen the first step in that direction of expanding outside of just the Huntsville area? It was. Okay, um, it was, and then we had you know our, uh, the, our original customer um, who was really motivated. I mean, just worked really hard mm-hmm. um, to go out and basically you know lead this group of people as a as a civilian um, and. Great vision for just hey the army needs this okay. technology yeah. this reverse engineering 3D scanning uh, on an industrial scale there's places that need this and he has incredible vision to be able to go uh, you know say hey the, these the depots really mm-hmm. really need this they're yeah. the people keeping the airplanes in the air and the and the missile <laughs> yeah, systems flying sure. right so uh, and so that was we went kind of on that roadshow with him and just said hey we'll support and so we ended up hiring a few people two people. Uh, at Corpus Christi, wow, um, and then one in uh, Letterkenny Army Depot in Pennsylvania. So, okay, um, so yeah, that was part of the growth, uh, which led up right up into COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we and and at that time you were like probably fifteen or so employees. That's right. Okay, and so I mean, it's it, it's a little. I would assume it's probably a little bit easier to go to a remote option of work when there's only fifteen people. You're not looking at a hundred, two hundred thousand employees mm-hmm. um but it's still a it's still a, a territory that is not um it wasn't it was uncharted right. no one had ever experienced it right um you know you, you probably didn't necessarily have the systems in place to go remote and you probably have systems that don't allow you to go remote mm-hmm. i mean there's stuff that you can't see at your home computer that you right. probably work on um and so what did like what was those first maybe three months of covid kind of figuring out and when did you kind of feel like okay you got you got this system now mm-hmm. that can that, that can support maybe what this, what the future looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was tough. I mean, there's obviously tons of personal challenges for everybody. Yeah. Um, but on the corporate side, you know, a lot of the things that we were doing at the time, you can't do from yeah. home. So we, we just <laughs> kept coming, kept coming work, in where they, wow. uh, and just be as careful as you can. And, um, you know, I will say there were some extra, um, you know, operations or corporate effort to for sure. make sure that we submit all the right things to go in somebody else's facility and if you have visitors and all that. So there was some extra work there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we, a lot of those folks are still on the team today and we, we just had a great team of folks that were yeah. just like, hey, we got to get this done. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, there's people counting on this stuff. For sure. Uh, and it, it, we were fortunate to have, uh, you know, the mission and the and the customers that we had at the time, that's just how it felt. Yeah. And so it was just. Like these things have to happen yeah. no matter what. No matter what's happening in the world, these these projects, these uh, initiatives that y'all are doing have to happen. Right. Um, and so did you see, did you see growth in the company during COVID or when did you kind of, after COVID or at what point did you start seeing that continued growth? Because I mean, obviously you've grown to more than 15 people now. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, COVID, we, on the corporate side, again, we just, 
we kind of just kept trucking. I mean, yeah. it was, um, you know, there were things that we had in our strategic plan, um, probably some opportunities that opened up because we were willing to go yeah. do things and yeah. travel and go places. And you were still in the office. You could answer the call if someone called. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We were, you know, a lot of that, again, the, you know, working on hardware and hands-on and going to customer sites and we were totally willing to do that. Again, mm-hmm. it's testament to the team that we had for that sure at the time and, and still do. Um, and so, yeah, we did, we did see a lot of growth there. Um, you know, and, and through some of the metrology efforts that we have, we met other folks in different, uh, disciplines and mm-hmm. uh, we're able to recruit some of those folks and yeah that was you know kind of how the growth happened the last couple of years and yeah now we're mid 40s um, wow. employees and so <coughs> super excited about that this yeah. last year was a big deal for us uh, moved into a new office be looking for some more space <laughs> uh, here in a little <laughs> yeah. bit and so, so has as besides those two locations that you already have in Corpus Christi and um, uh, and other location have you as your team have other other spots throughout the country or have you just kind of dialed uh dialed back the growth externally and kind of just done the, done more of the growth internally here at Huntsville. Yeah, we there are, we do have a few folks that are uh, kind of scattered around, but Huntsville is really home base for yeah, us. For sure. I mean, it's uh, considered the home team. Um, we're big supporters. Industrial base, Huntsville's a great <laughs> place sure. to do it. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, we answer calls and, and go do whatever our customers need, you know, mm-hmm. outside of Huntsville. But yeah. Um, but yeah, most everybody's here. Okay. And so, I mean, looking now, I mean, we're recording this episode in February of 2024. Um, you've gotten through COVID. You've seen this team grow from five people in one conference room to 40 plus people now. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you see as 2024? What are some goals, Relogic, at, 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 in your eyes as far as company growth, initiatives, mm-hmm. things you hope to see, you know, uh, obviously, the Huntsville community is, is is important to you. Like the ways mm-hmm. in which you want to give back. Like, what does twenty twenty four look like for yeah. Relogic? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, for us, uh, you know, we really started focusing on growth um, heavily in twenty two, um, and and one of the things that we that we had to do was go on an awareness tour, right? Because <laughs> we're a small company. There's yeah. lots of small businesses in Huntsville. Um, if you don't do that, people don't know who you are. For sure. And so uh, 2022 was a year of awareness. I kind of, we, we joked around the office. It's like rolling stones or something. You got to go, <laughs> you got to go out here and, and, uh, you know, uh, started opening for whoever will let you on the yeah. stage. Yeah. Right. And then, and then eventually you're headlining. And yeah. so, um, that, that was kind of the fuel that we had, uh, talking with customers and, Hey, we've got this new team, small company. Um, it's a new company, but we're not inexperienced. Mm-hmm. Um, and so making that distinction and here's all our capabilities, um, I think we did a pretty good job of that in 23. Um, so in 22, 23 and 20, and then, uh, last year we've doubled. Um, wow. And so each year, and, uh, so that's been fantastic. So a lot of the, our customers are listening to what we were saying apparently. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, 23 was the year of execution. Okay. And so if you tell them that you can do all this stuff, well, you now, better, now you have to do it. Now you have to do it. That's right. <laughs> uh, and so that was our theme for 23 and then, uh, you know, 24, uh, for us is the year of competition. So, okay. um, yeah, we're, you know, people start noticing that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and, uh, you gotta be able to compete. Yeah. I love, I love competing baseball. Uh, obviously a big part of my life. Um, I do some racing, some amateur racing and things like that. Yeah. Car racing, there's huge competition there. So I, I love that aspect about government contracting this year. You can go get in a competition anytime. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anytime. There's always someone willing to have a fight. That's right. And, uh, and, it, and you know it's friendly 99 yeah, percent of the time, sure. but it's but yeah it's hey this solicitation's out here we think we can do that better than the other guys yeah. and then the, that's that's what starts yeah. it. so uh and i love that part and, i mean and, and, and like and then growing a company or, or doing anything like this is something that doesn't just like it's not just going to happen overnight i mean right. you've, you've been like going from five people to now 40 people obviously in it in a short amount of time but also in a strategic amount of time right like you're not trying to over 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 uh provide as far as like growing too many people too quickly and then not being able to support what you can say. And I think, you know, breaking it down into these last three years to kind of have these initiative of like, Hey, this is the year that we're going to just to like go out there and just destroy. Like we are going to make sure we hit everything, all the targets, Mm -hmm. our quarterly objectives, our, our, our six month objectives, our yearly objectives. And we're going to really put a dip, put people on notice of who Relogic is. Yeah. That, no, that's it. And it's, yeah, it's well said. Um, you know, and I think the, what we've done a good job of, and this is not me personally, but the whole team, um, is growing sustainably and responsibly mm-hmm. and um, organically. So mm-hmm. it's it's not been 
you know, send in a cold proposal for <laughs> 50 spots, yeah. you know, of people. It's all been uh, organic. Hey, you guys did a great job on this. Might want your help on this other yeah. thing. So it's all, uh, which that feels pretty good. Yeah, um, for sure. And it allows you to to be responsible and sustainable uh, with the team that you have. And, um, you know, again, uh, one of the things that we, we had our uh, 2024 kickoff um, here recently and, uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about in there is you, there's there's success and there's significance. And mm-hmm. you can be successful adding value to yourself, right, which mm-hmm. that's what the the world sees, like, oh, there's, you know, usually materialistic, right? Yeah, there's, for sure. It's success. Oh, it's got a lot of money or a house or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is, right? Um, and what we want to do is do that, right? That's part of life. you got to provide for your family and be successful that way. But also significance is adding value to other people or yeah. adding value, something bigger than yourself. And you can do both. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, everything that we do at Relogic, it's, we look at those two things and go, is it going to, is it going to be successful? Do the, does the, does the team win? Do, do we win? Yeah. But also is it significant? Yeah. And I, I don't think they're, they're not mutually exclusive. Like you can, you can have both. And when you right. achieve both, that's when you, that's when you really uh, like it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like Sweet. the icing on the cake. It's, that's it's, right. it's, it's being, it's like that feeling when you're, going on a three day weekend and you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like that's the feeling when you're able to have both. Um, and it, like, it's easier said than done. We can say it, like it's, 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 it's a, it's a journey. It's a, you're on this journey of being a, a, an executive, an entrepreneur, a CEO. Is that something you always had the itch to do? Or is that something that kind of happened on throughout your career? Yeah. I, you know, if I, I'd, I would definitely be lying if I said in high school, I'll, you know, have <laughs> yeah. an engineering company yeah. one day or lead Most a, likely to be a CEO was it, not it, your uh, no. superlative. It was not. Uh, <laughs> it was not. Um, but I, you know, early in my professional career, I did, uh, you know, I learned some things to do, what to do, and yeah. sometimes what not to do. And, um, you know, not a lot of that not to do happened in my case, but yeah. you see that and it's like, and I'll take that note and make sure we don't do yeah. that. And, and, so and, and, if, you, and you, it, if you have good leaders in your life too, to be able to say, Hey, here's what, right. you know, good bosses, good, good, uh, um, role models. I mm-hmm. think then you're able to say, okay, like this could be possible for me too. Yeah. Like same thing with you pursuing the career, career in engineering. Like you had people that in your life, your dad, your grandfather, your uncle that were doing it. And it was like, well, like, I think I could probably do this too. Right. And then like uh, you have, your dad is I three, like I could do this too. Yep. And so like you have all these things that like, though in the moment you probably didn't mean much to you, but in hindsight now you're like, Oh, I don't think I'd be doing this. If it wasn't for that. Oh, it's huge. You're exactly right. Huge deal. For yeah. Me. Um, yeah. I'm fortunate to have probably the best mentor that anybody could ask for in my, in my dad. Yeah. Um, both, you know, personally and professionally. I mean, there's, there's, and there's a lot of times where that stuff overlaps, but the success versus significance thing. Oh, for sure. My, you know, my dad is a perfect example of that. The best example that I can think of, of doing both of those things. Yeah. Um, and particularly the significant part. I mean, there's so many things in the community um, that he's, he's able to do, uh, you know, through the Wicks Family Foundation and yeah. things like that. That's like, man, you're really coupling that success and significance together. Um, so yeah, I've had fantastic mentorship, um, throughout that. And there, and you're probably right. There's, there's things throughout my life in high school where it's like you know, <laughs> probably little bits and pieces yeah. here. It's like, okay, yeah, maybe one day I could do that. And, yeah, and, and it, it, it is and interesting to me, the, the people, the people part, the competition part, setting the team up correctly, yeah. uh, a t- working with the team to make sure everything's, you know, meshing. Um, that's the, those are the kind of things that, that really, that I really enjoy. And then, you know, providing a place or an environment for people to thrive. That's, that's what, that's what gets me. Yeah, for sure. So So if someone's listening and they have the itch to do something entrepreneur, they have the itch to, you know, get out of their corporate job, start their own thing. They have a passion for doing something and maybe not even in the same field that they're in today. Mm -hmm. Like they could be an engineer, but they really want to be a chef and they have this idea to do this itch. What was that? What would be that piece of advice that would, that you would say you would give them to kind of push them over the edge to say, Hey, just go for it. Yeah. Uh, so I, the big thing for me, I'm, I'm pretty risk averse, um, Mm -hmm. which is not, uh, you know, not not every entrepreneur has that has that uh, characteristic. Yeah. Um, unless there's a plan, and it, the plan has some thought, and there's a path to execution, mm-hmm. then I'm not risk averse <laughs> at yeah. all. And then, then you're all in. Then we're all in. Gotcha. And so that would be my, you know, that would be my bit of advice: is generate a plan, um, think through the whole thing, think about step two and three, mm-hmm. not just the first. Yeah. And then execute for sure. So once you get the plan to to 80 percent execute yeah and uh i believe the general patent that you know the perfect is the enemy of done mm. so get it get it to good <laughs> and then go do it yeah that that's that's uh probably the bit of advice and that's what i really had to you know 
look at with relaunching. I didn't know. I knew, you know, step one. I knew mostly of step two. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. how I was going to, you know, make the payroll part you know, yeah. four months out for after sure. hiring a few folks at the same time. But you, you have a plan, and then it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be all the way thought out, but. Like you have to, you have to get outside of your head that you know it all, or yeah. that you think you know it all, or you, you know, competition. In, like you, you mentioned, that competition is a great thing, but at the end of the day, like people are going to choose to shop somewhere else and not shop at yours, even if yours is better because they like that place more. Yeah. Like that's just that's just the reality of it. And so, like if you're looking at starting something and you see someone that's twelve steps ahead of you, asking them mm-hmm. because the moment that you are twelve steps ahead of where you are today you can help support someone that's 12 steps behind. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. so, uh, and I, like, I think it's, it's such a unique thing. Cause like, I mean, you grew up in Huntsville at a time that, you know, maybe Huntsville wasn't the coolest place. Like, mm-hmm. People didn't think of Huntsville as this destination to come to not a ton of small businesses, not a ton of like unique offerings. Yeah. Um, did you always think that you would come back here and plant your roots here? Or did you ever have the itch to say, let's, let's move out West. Let's go down to Florida. Let's go up to, you know, uh, Montana. Let, let's travel and let's live somewhere else. Or did you always think Huntsville's home? Huntsville's always felt like home to me. I, you know, I've had been fortunate enough to travel a bunch of places. And so I've been able to, you know, check those boxes yeah. that way. Um, but Huntsville is fantastic. And, and you're right. When I was in college at UAH, there was few things to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but most of my friends were like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah, for sure. Then, I mean, I, I don't think that's changed. I mean, even when I graduated high school in 2017, yeah. like it was, we were just on the cusp of what downtown Huntsville is. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there was still that, oh, no, I'm going to go to college at Auburn. Mm-hmm. I'm then going to move and live in Atlanta. I'm going to go up to Tennessee and Nashville, or I'm going to live somewhere. I'm going to Colorado. And I think, I mean, really, I would even say, you know, I would I would dare to say that, you know, even in the last three or four years, has that become mm-hmm. a, a reality that, you know, most people will say, yes, I'll go somewhere else for college. But at the end of the day, I'm going to come back to Huntsville. Right. Or I'm going to go live somewhere for two years, and I'm going to come back to Huntsville. I mean, I have friends now that are, like, you know, maybe kind of considering coming back to Huntsville. Yeah. Like, it's it's not... It's not such a um, a foreign thing to think about. It's right. like I could actually see myself living here, and wow! Like now that you have to pay for something else in another city, you're like well, Huntsville's kind of a little bit nicer to pay for that. Like it's a little bit easier to pay right. for that. Um, if if someone's listening and they want to connect with you, they want to support you, they want to find out more information about Relogic, uh, interested in jobs, interested in the work you do, where can they find you, and where are you yeah. located at? Um, yeah, we're on all the socials. Uh, Relogic Research. Um, find us at our website, RelogicResearch.com. Um, be happy to, to talk to anybody. We've got a few things open right now, but Perfect. we're always looking for, for solid team members. And, awesome. Um, but yeah, and um, thank you for having me on yeah, the podcast. Thanks, thanks for being here. Yeah, and, and we'll have all their information in the episode notes. So if you're sure. listening and you want to find out and you want to see those links, you need to visit episode notes. Or if you're watching it on YouTube, you can go to the description of the video and you can find those links as well. But I appreciate you taking the last 30, 35 minutes or so talking with me. Yeah, uh, I continue to look forward to the success that Relogic will have here at Huntsville. And we'll have to have you back on in a couple of years to see about your company now being a 100 plus person company. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Clark. It's been a lot of fun.